Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Gabriel, just another fan TV. Back at you another video, like the content of this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Like the content of this channel, go ahead and hit subscribe, man. Ravens content coming at you on a daily basis. Hey, as most of y'all know, I'm out here in Orlando, Florida, man. I was at Disney World uh, with the family. I wasn't able to watch the game live yesterday, but I was able to watch the game replay this morning. Got to get my thoughts on it. Uh, Ravens collapsed versus the office 42-38, and we're going to break it down quarter by quarter, what I like from the offense, what I like from the defense, likes and dislikes, all of that, okay? So let's just hop right into it. Open and kick off, Devin Duvernay takes it to the crib. Awesome play. Devin Duvernay is showing his, um, not his versatility, because he's been doing that, but his usefulness to this team and that he's a valued member of this team. Uh, you know, hopefully, I know he got knocked out late in the game with a concussion, so hopefully he's not, you know, it's not too bad and we can, you know, get to see Devin Duvernay next week. All right, now. Let's start with the Ravens offense, what I liked in the first quarter, okay? Rashad Bateman. I love what I saw from Rashad Bateman. He was elusive. He was catching passes. I mean, I remember he caught about his pass maybe about seven yards, was able to make a play on the defender and turn it into about 12, 15 yards, all right? That doesn't sound like that doesn't sound like a big play, but that's huge for a receiver one, all right? You can't just catch the ball fall. You know what I mean? You gotta be able to make somebody miss, get a couple extra yards, all right. And Rashad Bateman can do that. He's not a technically a big body receiver, but he is a receiver that gives the Ravens more options being their lead guy. I liked what I saw from him, especially uh, with all game. We're talking about the first quarter right now, okay? Um, second thought about the offense is that this running game is just not good, all right? Um, we can't just say it with the Jets. Now we're here versus the Dolphins. Same issues are still occurring. If Lamar Jackson doesn't run this ball, the team can't move, all right? Now, last year, we saw that Devontae Freeman, Latavius Murray, it took them a while to get into, used to the system, but once they got used to the system, they started running the ball effectively. Maybe that's what's happening with Kenyon Drake. I don't know, but I'm going to be very honest with you. When I'm watching Kenyon Drake play, I'm seeing somebody with no explosiveness, no shiftiness, not able to really do anything once the ball is handed to him in the backfield. That's what I'm seeing, personally. All right, And we're going to get right into the J.K. Dobbins thing. That's why it's so hard for me to understand why the Ravens continue to try to dig J.K. Dobbs out of practice and things like that, have him out there warming up before the game and not play him, right? We don't want to rush J.K. Dobbins back, and I'm all fine for that. Then put him on IR. Y'all should have did that to start the season. He come back week five, it's no worries. But now we got these first two games, two games where we could have used J.K. Dobbins, and you're saying he's not ready. Well, if he's not ready now, it's going to be ready next week. And if he's not ready next week, then you just wasted this beginning of the season on a roster spot that could have been for somebody else. You know what I mean? And I love J.K. Dobbins. I want, that's why I want to see him out there because he's the explosive running back that this running game needs, okay? Now, um, as far as the defense goes in the first quarter, uh, Marcus Williams is a straight-up playmaker. Great interception. Uh, everybody was around the football on that play. I mean, it was a tip pass. He tried to go to Tyreek Hill. Um, I think I saw Humphrey in there. I think Queen might have been in there. But Marcus Williams is the guy that comes down with the interception off the tip, off the tip pass. Um, in my old reaction video, I said that Marcus Williams could be a guy that leads the league in interceptions. And so far, he has three this season. So he's he's off to a strong start. Has to keep it going, all right? So now, um, I forgot to mention Offsey in the first quarter as well. The Ravens fumble um, at the goal line. Lamar and Linda Baum don't have the right kind of exchange. That leads to the Dolphins getting the ball at about, what, like the one-yard line, right? And um, that's where the second quarter picks up at. I feel like defensively, they just weren't aggressive enough. All right, and I felt like that all game. But in the second quarter, they're down at the goal line, about the three-yard line. This is when Jalen Waller does a great little out and up on Patrick Queen. You know, it's like it was on coverage. And Marcus Williams had a chance to attack Jalen Waddle. But kind of played it cautious and didn't go after him. And now Jalen Waddle scamped right out of the field for 60 yards. All right. Now that 60 yard game turns into a whole touchdown drive. The Ravens give up a 97 yard touchdown drive. That's not something you ever want to see. Like a 97 yard touchdown drive um, from, listen, Tua played a good game, but you should not have that happening. I got here in my notes that Tua into the midway to the second quarter. He had it been disrupted. All right. He, he was comfortable. He was calm. He was cool. Nothing was going on for him. All right. But then there was one drive 
where Justice Houston gets a sack, gets a pressure. So they kind of ramped it up a little bit, but that's just one guy. That's just Justin Houston. Where's Owe? Where's the rest of the D-line at? It needs to be a collective team effort. Didn't see that. All right. Now, what I did see is the rookies made some good plays. Jalen Armour Davis had a good had a good breakup. Um, Pepe Williams had a good hit on Tyreek Hill. So they show some promising things as the young guys on defense, but overall, it just lacked a lot of aggression out there, I think. All right. As far as the offense goes, this is where Bateman shined. Obviously, outside stem, slant route on Xavier Howard, big time corner, takes it to the crib of 75 yards. All right. That's the kind of play you want to see. That's the kind of play that makes Ravens fans like me less worried about the big play element of this offense. Because if Bateman can do that, showing off his speed, showing off his versatility, then that's going to be a big, major key for this offense. All right. Um, if they have a guy like Bateman who could do short, intermediate, and take a 75 yards to the touchdown, that is a big, big, major key and something that's going to help this offense down the line. All right. So, yeah. So, with Shaw Bateman touchdown. I got, I got nothing knowing here says Lamar Jackson is still the only explosive runner on this team. And that's just what it is, you know. Uh, but let's talk about the positives of what happened in the second quarter. Let's, let's keep going with that. Rashad Bateman obviously had a big touchdown. Lamar Jackson was sharp all around. He threw a strike to Mark Andrews down to the, like, the entry yard line. I thought he got in, but, you know, it was very close. Play action to get the ball to Mark Andrews again. One-yard touchdown. It's looking good. They're in cruise control. All right, Ravens get the ball back again. They draw down the field. Lamar Jackson delivers another strike to Demarcus Robinson. 28-7, you're cruising. Everything looks lovely. Everything looks good. Third quarter gets there. I see the offense is making an effort to get Isaiah Likely involved. I've seen some swing passes, a little out routes. And that's good because he's an explosive talent, so they should be looking to get him the ball. So I had no problem with that, all right? The Ravens are still in control of the game. Everything's moving good. Lamar Jackson gets his big touchdown run. All right, we're feeling good about what's going on, all right? Now, on the defensive side, let's talk about this, right? What I noticed on the defensive side is that um, lots of off coverage. And I get it. Waddle and Hill are fast. Don't get me wrong. Two of the fastest players in the NFL happen to be a duo on the same team. So I understand it. But Tua's strength is the short, quick passing game. And the Ravens let this guy get comfortable and get in a rhythm in that short, quick passing game, and it came to bite him. Now, I love what McDon uh, McDonald does most of the time, but I feel like this game, he stuck too heavy with the rushing four. A lot of times, it wasn't any pressure on Tua. They rushed forward, they sat back, and said, all right, Tua, find somebody. The issue with that is you can't just rush four, right, and then you don't challenge the receivers. It's too easy. I mean, I'm saying little out routes, little slant routes. Two is throwing the ball five, seven yards. It's easy completions. He just he just racking up easy completions, okay? Just racking them up, all right? Um, Then we get down to the Kosicki touchdown. It's third and 13. The Ravens are in a good spot. Go watch the play. Mike McDonald chooses to rush two players, bro. The Ravens drop nine in coverage on this play. Tua has all day. He throws a jump ball to Mike Kosicki, who's actually one of the best jump ball players in the league he goes up he gets it he brings it down 35 14 the ravens are still cruising all right but i don't like that now listen wink was way too aggressive at times and i'm not saying oh i miss wink martin there all right i'm not saying that but it's third and 13 right you hold these guys to a field goal that's a big play you cannot just rush two players man you can't do that you gotta send some more heat at tour all right. Um, fourth quarter, too many times. Hill, Waddle, wide open. Still talking about the defense, obviously. Hill and Waddle are wide open. These are the two main receiving threats on the Dolphins, and they got way too many opportunities. Both of these guys get double-digit catches. I think Jalen Waddle had 18 targets. It was way too many opportunities for these guys. Way too many, all right? And then we get into... Um, the blown coverages. Well, first of all, I want to talk about Tua did a great play. The spin move on, I think, was Brodrick Washington. Throw that pass. That was a big time play for the, for the touchdown pass. That was, that was a big time play. I can't, I can't even hate on that. All right. Um, but for the defense, it was just too many blown plays, right? It was just too many blown coverages. 
But let's talk about the offense real quick in the fourth quarter. Um, they go for it, fourth and one at the forty yard line. It just doesn't work. It just does not work. Now, in my opinion, I have no problem with the Ravens doing that. All right, you got Lamar Jackson, you got Patrick Ricard, who was another lineman. You put everybody at the line of scrimmage. Somebody, some way, somehow, Lamar Jackson is going to find a way to get a yard. The Ravens do this all the time. Now, listen, hindsight twenty twenty, take the three points. You go up thirty eight twenty one. Um, you make it a three score game right there, and I, I get that a hundred percent. I really do. Um, but at the same time, you got Lamar Jackson. The Ravens go for it all the time. We we love it when it works. We hate it when it don't. It's one of the, to me that's one of them situations. All right, I had no problem with the Ravens going for it right there. It comes back to haunt them, but it's what it is. Now back to the defense. Okay, the first blown coverage looks like Kyle Hamilton doesn't get over top because. Marcus Peters is turning Tyreek Hill loose. Kyle Hamilton, maybe eyes in the backfield, doesn't get over top and doesn't see Tyreek Hill behind him. Touchdown. All right. That's the rookie back there. And he made he made a mistake. He did. All right. Second blown touchdown. <laughs> it looks like everybody is playing a different coverage. All right. I literally paused the tape or paused the game film and watched it. Marcus Peters is like he's dropping back into a third. Uh, <laughs> Marcus Williams and Kyle Hamilton are both at the line of scrimmage. They both drop out and kind of accidentally double team Jalen Wilder running down the middle of the field. All right, which means it's a clock's already in the box. So you got all three of your safeties within like five, ten yards of each other. Jalen Armour Davis is on the other side of the field. He's playing cover two. He's the only person on the field playing cover two. You can tell because he sits, he squats, he lets Tyree Kill run by him. He, he barely even turns when Tyreek Hill goes by him, all right? I think, now listen, I don't know. We'll see what somebody, you know, who actually breaks down film says about it. It looks to me like Hamilton and Williams end up doing the same job, and only one of them was supposed to be doing that job. One of them was supposed to be deep covering where, where Tyreek Hill ended up scoring that, that second touchdown that. And one of them was supposed to be the fake blitz, come out, guard Waddle. But they end up doing the same job. And it's been a bone touchdown. You can see Hamilton and Williams talking to each other after the play, like, yo, what happened? So, you know, the Ravens get the ball back. They get three points, whatever. And the Dolphins drive down the field. All right. And they put Jalen Armour Davis in a tough spot, one on one versus Jalen Waddle. And he couldn't, he couldn't come up with the pass breakup on the game with a touchdown. And the Ravens lose 42 38, man. The Ravens did a lot of things well. They did a lot of things wrong. If I had to point out one major thing I think the Ravens did wrong is that this, this defense was not aggressive enough. Mike McDonald, you need to turn up the pressure just a little bit, all right? I'm not saying go full wink. Find a, find a nice happy medium. It was way too easy. Tua is a rhythm quarterback. Short passes, boom, 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 boom. By the time you started to send pressure at him, it was too late. He in rhythm. At that time, Tua was on autopilot. And by the end of the game, Reads was easy. They didn't they do anything to disrupt his rhythm in that first half. Nothing. So by the time the third quarter, fourth quarter came around, he was comfortable. It's not like, I mean, he threw two picks. Yes, he did. But it's not like Tua was really having a bad game. He really wasn't. He was comfortable. And that was the, I think that's the biggest thing. He was too comfortable. They didn't turn up the pressure on him, man. And um, they lost. They lost. As far as the offense goes, you, we can say that we didn't like what Greg... I, listen, there was a play call in the fourth quarter that I really hated from Greg Roman. It was like a pistol toss play to uh, Justice Hill that lost like five yards. Did not, did not like that play call. But at the end of the day, your offense gives you 35 points. A 21-point lead in the fourth quarter, you can't lose that. You can't collapse. We can say everything you want about Greg Roman. We can say everything you want about this offense. The offense did their job. They scored 38 points. You scored 38 points in the NFL game, you expect to win. Simple as that. So this is on defense. And a lot of the blown coverages came from the rookies. So was the moment too big? Did they not understand the call? I don't know. But obviously, this lack of communication can't continue to happen. It just can't. What happened in that fourth quarter reminded me of everything we saw last season. And the Ravens can't go back to that. They can only move forward. So they play the Patriots next week. This Dolphins game was to be was a, is a huge drop. Because 
they play the entire AFC East, right? They beat the Jets. They lose to the Dolphins. I was counting 3-0. and And then the Bills game was a toss-up. Now the Bills game becomes very important. Now this Patriots game is very important. All right? Because coming out 2-2 two and two out of four games is okay. But the Ravens had a real opportunity to be 3-1 and one and in a better position. And they, and, and they dropped it. They dropped the ball on that. All right? Now, obviously, they can still beat the Patriots. They can still beat the Bills. So we'll see what happens from there, man. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. This is your boy Gabriel. Just on the Fan TV. I'm out.